Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I welcome you. Thank you for always being a blessing to this uh, ministry. I want to thank God for you watching me right now, brother, sister. It was a journey in 2023, and we went through 2023. We are now in 2024. Praise the Lord. And I believe you watching me right now that God has preserved you. Praise the Lord. And I celebrate the grace of God upon your life. And I celebrate the favor of God. I've been speaking for you in your life in the name of Jesus. My name remains Brother Blessing Osamoye. This is the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And this is where God, in His grace and mercy, transform our lives by the power of His Word. And I believe God is going to bless you and He's going to bless me as well in the name of Jesus. You know, I just want you to understand something that God has not finished with you yet or myself yet. He's still working on us on a daily basis. You know, He's speaking on our life by His mercy, His word, His grace, His wisdom, and the help of the Holy Spirit that works in us will become like His image. Praise the Lord. So that's why when anybody sees you, they say they are Christians by their character and the things that we do. Praise the Lord. Are you not excited? Say, praise the Lord. I want you to call your friends. Call your friends. Call your family. Let's come and fellowship together in love of Christ, in love of the kingdom. Praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another moment to come before you. Lord, we give you all the praise for you alone is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord, for the year 2023. From January to December, you were faithful. You are still faithful forevermore. You are faithful. So, Father, we're here again. This fellowship is here again. The fellowship you have made by your son, Jesus. The fellowship you have brought together by your spirit that is in us. Father, Lord, thank you. And Lord, as I begin or we begin to worship you, giving thanks to you, we ask that your mercy begin to speak for us in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask King of Glory as we begin to, to speak your word. Father, King of Glory, let men, women, community, people begin to see you in us in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, let your word transform and renew our mind in Jesus' name. Thank you, precious Father, for in Jesus' most wonderful name we have prayed. I want you to grab your Bible, grab your Bible, the book of Psalm, chap, cha, Psalm chapter 9, verse 1. I want you to grab your Bible. The Bible is very important, and that is the Bible is the Word of God. And I want you to have that Word of God in your hand as you are some reading it, you're reading it. As I'm declaring it, you are declaring it. As I'm reading it, you are checking it as well. Seeing the beauty of God and the beauty of his testimony. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the light of God will shine through that word in your life in Jesus' name. If you are there, say praise the Lord. I want to read. He said, I will give thanks. Ha, shaka. I will give thanks because God is good. I will give thanks and praise the Lord with all my heart. Heart. Whoa, do you know that our heart is what God needs? The intention and the way you think towards that heart is what God receives as a sweet smelling aroma of offering. So give him today to thank him for retaining your life, for preserving your life, for protecting your family, for making you function, for making people around you function. Begin to give God the praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Honor him. Begin to thank God for the wonders and the, 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 the magnificent wonders of his word in your life. Begin to thank God for the power of his name. Begin to thank God for the wisdom that God has given to you. Begin to thank God for everyone around you. Begin to thank God for that child, for that wife, for that husband. Begin to thank God for that friend. Begin to thank God for your mother. Begin to thank God for your, for your father. Begin to thank God for the works of your hands that God has given to you, that gift, that profession. Thank God for that profession. Begin to thank God that you can be able to function. Everything in your body is functioning. And even if you are on the 
wheelchair you are listening to me right now. Begin to thank God because God is going to touch you and heal you in the name of Jesus. Begin to thank God for accessibility to access the word of God through the internet. Begin to thank God for the ability to access the word of God through the art copy of the Bible that you have. Begin to thank God for the accessibility to begin to study the word through the app that is, in the, is on the internet that you downloaded. Begin to thank God for the ability to think, ability to speak, to hear, to see. Begin to give him all the praise. He is worthy to be praised. His name is Yahweh. Ha. His name is Alpha and Omega. His name is Jehovah Rapha, the healer. His name is Jehovah Ebenezer, the provider. So I just want you to begin to lift your hand. Let's just sing to him. I want you, and God is delighted for you to sing as well. In that living room, begin to sing your song. Begin to sing the song in darling. Sing it genuinely from your heart in truth and in spirit. And that is what God is looking for. That is what God delights in. That is what God loves you to do. Just, just begin to tell him, Lord, you are a good God. Just begin to tell me, Lord God, it does not tell on you. I just want to sing with me. The song says, generation after generation, they're praising you, you know, and his name is Jah. Ha, his name is Jah. You know, when I heard this song, this man of God was singing it, uh, those who were singing it, I was so blessed. And I said, I'm going to you sing this song today to worship my father. So you have your own song. Generation after generation, they praise you, and no one sought you up.
our glory father be our magnified thank you Lord for your healing power in the hospitals on the streets thank you for the loss that you brought to yourself we give you all the praise thank you father thank you Jesus thank you Jehovah Thank you for your sweet that dwell within us. Thank you.
for all the merited favor that you've given to us. We give you praise. Thank you for all those that have ministered in this place. Thank you for all the people that have ministered in this place. Thank you for your life that is transforming. The life in your word that is transforming. The resurrection power that is healing. Father, we give you praise. You are highly exalted. For in Jesus' most wonderful name, we have worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to open to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3. I want to read from verse, from verse 16 to 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3. I want us to read. If you are there, say praise the Lord. Verse 16 says, Every scripture is God breath, given by his inspiration. I want to begin to declare. Say, Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, Father, breathe on me now. Say, Father, breathe on me. The grace to be inspired by your word in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, let your word become profitable to me because I'm a good ground that you've ordained, you created. As I receive your word today, Lord, it shall be profitable to my family. It shall be profitable to my community. It shall be profitable to my life in the name of Jesus. It shall be profitable to the body of Christ in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, as I receive your word today, I will receive the instruction that I need in the name of Jesus. As I receive the instruction that I need from the word of God today, my life will not remain the same. In the name of Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. As I receive the word of God today, every error in my life, what I've been thinking, that it's not right, they will be blotted out in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, as I receive your word today, your light in my life begin to shine out. I'll become like a city on the hill that cannot be hidden in the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' most wonderful name, we have declared. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today's topic is an amazing topic. And it says, it says here, making a vow that bring greatness. Praise the Lord. Making a vow to bring greatness. And the Bible text we're going to be studying from or reading from the main Bible text is in the book of Genesis. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 22. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 22. If you are there, say praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Genesis chapter 22 from verse 14 to 18. That's where we're going to be studying from. And I believe the Lord is going to bless you through that word and it's going to open your eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, you might be wondering, and I know definitely, you, you, most of us might know the meaning of a vow. What is a vow? A vow is to make an honest promise or pledge. Every one of us, one way or other, we made that vow. <coughs> Maybe in our marriage, we've made that vow. And places we've been, we've made a vow. We've made a vow to either to our wife, to our husband, and it's a pledge, it's a promise that we must keep. But in the context of what we are talking about, it is the vow that God made. It is a declaration God made after Abraham did something amazing. After Abraham did something that proved that he loved God. This was a declaration God made. I want us to go to the scripture. Genesis. Let's start from Genesis chapter. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 22. From verse 14. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Genesis 22. From verse 14. Thank you, Father. I give you all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. It says here, and so Abraham named that place, the Lord will provide. And it is said to this day, on, this, on, this, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be seen and provided. So Abraham made 
and made a word upon the ground. He said, the Lord. He said, Abraham named that place where you mentioned a name. A name is a declaration. A name is a kind of a description. A name, <coughs> a name can be addressed as a language. Sorry about that. And Abraham named the place. The Lord will provide. If you read from verse 1 to up to 13, you will see how God tested Abraham that he should give Isaac his only begotten son. From Genesis, when God spoke to Abraham, you will see that it was a journey. When the Lord ministered in the book of Genesis, Abraham was 75 years old. And checking 75 years old, Abraham had Isaac in the age of 100 years old. Now, for 25 years, there was no child. Now, this is a man who had a son. God has blessed with a son, Isaac. And God said, give me your Isaac. And I remember in the same scripture that Abraham, when his son asked Abraham, where is the sacrifice for, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? He said, the Lord will provide. Abraham had faith on God. Abraham declared the word of God. And it came to pass, as he declared, so was it. Really, he gave Isaac. But God knew that the Abraham that he called from Genesis chapter 12 really, really had the love for him. He gave Isaac. And in giving Isaac, though he didn't kill Isaac, but God was looking at the act in which he gave Isaac to him. And God said, don't kill Isaac. Just as he has said, the Lord will provide. God provided a lamb for what? For the sacrifice. And that is the reason Abraham chose or declared that word on that particular place and said, the Lord will provide. Now, if you read it here, he said, on the, on, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be seen as provided. You are that mountain. You is that church that the Lord will provide for. But Jesus has come to die as the lamb for you. You've given your life to him. Jesus is your provider. Jehovah Ebenezer is your provider. Verse 15 says, The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, My, By myself, on the basis of who I am, God now, I have sworn an oath, an oath. I have declared the word of covenant that since you have done this thing and have not withheld from me your son, your holy son of promise, indeed, I will greatly bless you. I will greatly multiply your seed like the star of the heavens and like the sun on the seashore. And your seed shall possess the gates of their enemy by conquering them. Praise the Lord. Verse 15 says, through your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Let me stop there. I want to see it now, right now. Look at it. This man in his heart, just as Psalm chapter 9 verse 1 says, with my heart will I praise the Lord. In praising God is in giving as an offering. Now, what are you giving the Lord 2024? What are you giving the Lord in 2024? Are you ready to give your Isaac in 2024? Your Isaac might not be a child. Your Isaac might be that thing that you've been longing for and the Lord gave it to you. The Lord said, give it back to me. Give it back to me as an offering. Is it that job that God has given to you in 2023? The Lord is saying, give that job back to me. Don't let that job become an idol before you. Let me become still your master. The one that called you. The one that sent his only begotten son to die for you. God is saying, give me your Isaac. That I, my vow of covenant, I spoke, I declared, 
upon Abraham that he will speak for you. You know, we sing that song. Abraham blesses a mind. Abraham blesses a mind. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham blesses a mind. You know, Abraham blesses are yours because Christ came from that lineage. God gave Christ as a sacrifice. And there is something great about sacrifice. There is something great about offering. When you give something, when it's coming back, it becomes life. Abraham gave Isaac, gave Isaac in the heart. But life came out of what seed he has sown, praise the Lord. Now, God is asking you this moment, 2024 is the year of giving. I am not saying that every other year you shouldn't give. But 2024 is a year of giving your heart, your faith, having faith in him, faith in him, trust in him, rely on him. For a man to declare in by his word and say, the Lord will provide. Twice was that word mentioned. The Lord will provide. You know, begin to see God as God, not as man, not as he, not as she. Because whatever man tells you they will do, in short, they will disappoint you. But God will never disappoint you. Because why? God is the creator. He created you. He was never created. God is the creator. Now, how will you begin to enjoy that blessing that comes from giving? That blessing that made God to vow and say, you know what? I have sworn that I will bless you. Not only bless Abraham, bless his family. Now, going back to what I said, your Isaac could be your family. How are you making your family to know the Lord? The Lord is saying, give me your family. This new year, this year, forever, give me your family. Give me your wife. Give me your children. Give me yourself. It takes you first to give yourself to him before you can be able to attract others to the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want us to go to the scripture here. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King of glory. You are highly exalted. There is none like you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hebrew 4, verse 16. Let's open to Hebrew 4, verse 16. I want to read the scripture to us. Hebrew 4, verse 16. Hebrew 4, verse 16. The book of Hebrew 4, verse 16. Hebrew 4, verse 16. Hebrew 4, verse 16. I want to read. It said, Therefore, let us with privilege approach the throne of grace, that is the throne of God's gracious favor, with confidence and without fear. Now, for you to give, you need to do what? Acknowledge that there is a grace, and that grace, Christ has given you that grace to enjoy the blessing, the blessing that comes from giving, that God has given. And let that grace now become what you rest on, that, that that grace become what you believe on, the grace, but not a grace that you will abuse, but the grace that you will be beneficial, you will enjoy and have the strength to fulfill by giving yourself, by giving your mind, by giving all that is in you to God. Praise the Lord. Come to his grace. Approach his throne with grace. And how do you approach his throne with grace? Knowing that you are coming to your father. Say, Father, give me the grace, Lord, in this new year to give all to you. And I might enjoy the beauty of all that you've spoken concerning Abraham. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm not going to look at here. Today, I'm, going to, I'm just going to speak briefly by the grace of God. As God laid in my heart. Thank you, Father. I want you to see something here. How will you enjoy, enjoy, enjoy <laughs> that, that, that blessings of God? How will you enjoy, enjoy it by that vow that God has made? Is to acknowledge that moment of giving thanks to God. Giving thanks to God. Giving thanks to God. Praising God all the time. Making God to know that he is your source. Believing that he is your source. Believing that he is a faithful God. And where do you get that? You go to the book. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. 
giving thanks to God. Giving thanks to God. First Thessalonians 5, verse 18. First Thessalonians 5, verse 18. I want to read. First Thessalonians 5, verse 18. Thank you, Jesus. First Thessalonians 5, 5, 18. I want to read. It says, in every situation, no matter what the circumstances stands, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. For this is the will of God for you in Christ. Now, for you to enjoy, enjoy the blessing of God, you must make that vow to say, Lord, I will give thanks to you. No matter what comes my way, I will give thanks to God. In 2024 and forevermore, I will give thanks. No matter what is coming, no matter what is speaking, no matter what I'm hearing in the news, I will give thanks to God. You know, when you give thanks to God, you are already seeing the goodness of God. When you give thanks to God, it makes you closer to know the minds of God. The scripture says, it said the scripture of the Lord are with those that reverence the Lord. When you reverence him, you enjoy the beauty of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. And in 2024, you must make this decision. Very important. Psalm 34, verse 1. Psalm 34, verse 1. Psalm 34, verse 1. If you are there, say praise the Lord. Psalm 34, verse 1. Psalm 34, verse 1. It says, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord. To say I will is a vow. To say I will bless the Lord. You know, when you bless the Lord, he says it's more blessed to give than to receive. If you bless the Lord, the blessing of God comes to you in multiple fold. How do you bless the Lord? You bless the Lord with your substance. You bless the Lord by blessing those that are needed. He said, he say, a man that bless the poor, guess what? A man that gives to the poor lends to God. So when you give to the poor by your substance, by your giftings, those things that you have in you that you need to give to them, as you begin to give it to them, as you begin to feed them, as you begin to feed the homeless, as you begin to go on the street evangelizing, you are blessing the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You are blessing the Lord. How do you bless the Lord? You bless the Lord with your strength. You bless the Lord with your strength. You have to make the vow, vow declaring in pledge and in promise that you will keep by grace of God that in 2024, I will preach the good news. My actions will speak of Jesus. They will see Jesus in me. They will see the goodness of Jesus in me. How do you bless the Lord? You walk in love. You give love. Now, the love I'm talking about is not a love that the world defines. I can only love those that love me. I can only parade love so that people will see me that I'm giving. The love I'm talking about is love the unlovable. <coughs> love the unlovable. Love the unlovable. Pray for those that persecute you. That is a sign of love. 2024 is a vow you make that I will pray in love. I will, <coughs> I will pray in love. I will pray in love. I will not stop praying. I will not stop giving up on people. I will not give up on them. I will keep praying for them. I will keep showing love to them. Now, how again can you show love to people? You know, we focus on material things alone as poverty. Somebody can may be poor in knowledge, and yet you have the knowledge. And you have that knowledge in you. Pass it on. That is how you bless the Lord. As you begin to bless them, you begin to do what? To bless the Lord. That is why God said, Jesus said, He said, love your neighbor as yourself. So when you begin to love your neighbor, you are blessing the Lord. 
And remember, the first one says, you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your might. Now the second one says, love your neighbor as yourself. Because you don't see God, then you're the neighbor, your next door neighbor, is what God has created. You need to show that neighbor of yours that, you know what? I am an ambassador of Christ. And I will show love to you. And show that love the way Christ will have shown the love. And in doing that, you bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. The next thing we need to do that is very, very important as a child of God is to do what? Give yourself as an offering. Give yourself as an offering. Give yourself as an offering. Offering in the sense that on a daily basis, you must visit the word of God. You must read the Bible. You must study the word of God. Because as you are studying the word of God, you are giving yourself as an offering. Offering to receive. And as you are receiving, you are meditating on that word as an offering. In worship, as an offering. In, in action. So the true meaning of worship is when you keep the commandment and instruction of God. And that is worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to read a scripture to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King of Glory. I want to read the scripture to us. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm. Thank you, Father. Psalm 119, verse 11. Let me go to Psalm 119, verse 11. Verse 11. Psalm 119, verse 11. Praise the Lord. Psalm 119, verse 11. Psalm 119, verse 11. If you are there, you say, praise the Lord. Psalm 119, verse 11. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 11, I want to read. It says here, Your word I have treasured and stored in my heart. Your word. Now, 2024, make a vow and forevermore that the word of God will be in my heart. You know, what you treasure is what you love. What you treasure is what you're proud of. What you treasure, you don't want it to go off you. You take your time to do what? To digest it. You read the word of God. You meditate on it. He said, your word have I hidden in my heart. To hide, hidden the word of God in your heart is to meditate on it. You know, when you are eating a nice meal, you chew that meal and it goes to your stomach. It begins to nourish every part in your body. It begins to go through the blood cells and flow to every part that that food needs to go. The same way is the word of God. When you study the word of God, you treasure it, you love it. You begin to be filled with the wisdom of God. You begin to be filled with the understanding of God. You begin to be filled with the knowledge of God. And those wisdom, understanding, knowledge become an image. An image of the character that God wants you to become. It becomes an image of integrity that God wants you to become. That is getting the blessing from God. So make that vow 2024. And that is the vow that brings greatness. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 5. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just give you all the praise. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord. Matthew chapter 5. If you are there, say praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In 2024, you have to make a vow. A vow of decision. A vow of zeal and say, you know what? I will be merciful. Keep on saying, blessed is the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed is the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So 2024 and forevermore, make that vow of declaration that I will be merciful. No matter what comes my way, I will be merciful. I will be merciful. For those that offend me, I will be merciful. I want to begin to declare, say, in the name of Jesus, by the grace of God, I obtain the grace to be merciful. 
I made this declaration as a vow, knowing that your grace, Lord, will sustain me to be merciful in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, in 2024 that we are already in now, I make you to make a vow. It says here in Matthew chapter 5 verse 8, it says, Bless and anticipating God's presence, spiritually mature, are the pure in art. Begin to declare, in 2024, I make this vow by grace that in this year, throughout the remaining years, that I will have a pure heart. Nothing like a junk will stay in my mind or will stay in my heart. Do you know when your heart is without grudges? When your heart is not filled with the flesh, the lust of the flesh. When your heart is not envious. When your heart is, it can easily forgive. Can, can, when your heart is filled with the Spirit. When you allow the Holy Spirit to come into your heart for all the words that you've read, you've studied, and you begin to allow them to walk in you, that is when you see the blessing and the presence of God. God will not stay in a heart that backbites. God will not stay in a heart that destroys order to be elevated. God will not stay in the heart of those that know what, that lies the Lord. God will not stay in that. He said, blessed is that person that his heart is pure, for they shall see God. Do you want to see the move of the blessing of God this year? Just as Abraham enjoyed the blessing of the Lord, do you want to see that? I, I ask you, brother and sister, I ask you and I encourage you to begin to declare by the grace of God, my heart is pure. I made this vow in the name of Jesus because I will experience the greatness of God. For in Jesus' mighty name I've declared. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Do you want to enjoy the greatness in making that great vow? I want you to do something. Psalm 40 verse 1. Psalm 40 verse 1. Psalm 40 verse 1. Thank you, Father. Psalm 40 verse 1. Psalm 40, verse 1. I want you to read. Psalm 40, verse 1. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Psalm 40, verse 1. It says, I waited patiently and expectantly for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. Thank you, Father. So in this wonderful year and the year ahead, you must be patient. Patience should be in you. The spirit of patience should be in you. Make a vow that I will be patient. I will continually wait for God's time. I will not run ahead of God. I will wait for God. I will be patient with God's time. Because God's time and our time is not the same. A lot of us, out of being, not being able to be patient, will be looking for plan B. Let God be all that is your plan. The holy plan, God's plan, God's will, God's direction, God discernment in my life, be able to discern, be able to go through life through the word of God that will be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. May this vow this year that the Lord God that you will wait patiently for him. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I give you the praise. I worship you. There is no like you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing. Do you know that? David was anointed. After the anointing, David waited for 15 years be before he became a king. Picture this. He has been anointed as a king. There was a sitting king as Saul. But he waited. He went to all sorts of things by the will and the plan of God. But he got there 15 years after. A lot of us, the prophecy has been given to you. The word has been given to you. You'll be anointed for that ministry. God has not told you yet to leave that premises. But because other people are living, you want to leave. I'm not saying that you should stay in one spot. No. Let God lead you. Let God celebrate you. Let God announce you. A lot of us, we are chasing fame. Fame, we are chasing fame. We want to be recognized. We want to be known. Guess what? If God is the one that is displaying you, do you know how beautiful it is? Your Lord God is delighted in displaying you. 
and everyone around you will benefit of that blessing. Guess what? David killed Goliath. The people that were shouting, oh, uh, 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 um, uh, Saul killed a, a, a thousand and, uh, and David killed 10,000. People were celebrating him. That put him into trouble. But in all those things, Saul himself was envious of David. In the year that you are in, ask for God to give you the grace that when others have been celebrated, that you will not be what jealousy. That jealousy will not bounce and take dominion over you. The question is this, does everybody have the spirit of jealousy in them? It does come. It comes to you. It comes to play. The devil will come and play with your mind. It will tell you, mm, can you see they are celebrating that person? How can you? They are celebrating him. They are not celebrating you. And it starts playing in your mind. It does happen to me sometimes. But what I always tell the devil is, the devil, you are a liar. I'm not going to listen to you. I have made a vow to my father that no matter what anybody that comes around me, I will celebrate them. Because there is a time for me to celebrate them. And there is a time for them to celebrate me. Praise the Lord. So we need to do what this time of 2024. We need to celebrate others. We need to encourage them in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, 2024, make a vow, a wonderful vow, a vow aligned with the word of God that 2024, that I will be able to marry the Holy Spirit. How do you marry the Holy Spirit? You marry the Holy Spirit by being attentive, by being still, by being silent. You know, sometimes we talk too much. I will tell you, sometimes I talk too much sometimes. The best time for me to hear from me more is by being in the secret place of God. Psalm 91 verse 1 says it all. He who dwell in the secret place of the most high. The secret place of the most high is a place you, your mind be walking, but your mind is asking, Holy Spirit, what are you saying in this situation? What are you saying in this situation? Oh, that's why it should look like this. I'm still resting and believing in you. No matter what is flowing out there, no matter the cough, no matter how I feel cold, I know the Lord will deliver me from this. And to marry the Holy Spirit is to be continually be prayerful. Jesus, after sometimes ministering, you see him go to a place alone and do what? And pray. If Jesus, Jesus, go out there, went, do a miracle. After miracle, go to a place early in the morning and pray. You should pray. The song says, I will pray, I will pray, I will pray, oh, I will pray. If I don't pray, say that will make mess of me. Harabaya. I will pray, I will pray, I will pray, oh, I will pray. If I don't pray, Satan will make mess of me. Ah, if Moses can pray, oh, oh, oh. if Joshua can pray, oh. Psalm 119, verse 4 to 15. Verse 4. For verse 4. 
Psalm 119 from verse 4. Psalm 119 from verse 4. From verse 4, what to read to us? He said, You have ordained your precept that we should follow them with careful diligence. Verse 5. Oh, that my way may be established to observe and keep your status, obediently accepting and honoring them. Then I will not be ashamed when I look with respect to all your commandments as my guide. You know what? 2024. Learn to embrace the precept of God. Embrace the precept of God. Embrace the commandment of God. That commandment regarding your family. That commandment regarding how you will behave to others on the street. That commandment, commandment regarding how you will serve in the church. 2024. It's not a year to be lazy. It's not a year to be lazy. It's a year of walking with wisdom. It's a year of walking. Don't say, oh, you know what? I'm too tired. I don't want to pray. Oh, you know what? I, I don't think I'm going to church today. I'm not saying that if you don't go to church, you sin. But the same Bible says that we should not despise the gathering of the saint. There are things you benefit from your co-bedroom, your co-worker in the vineyard. 2024, if you're that time that your job has taken you away, even to study the Bible is a war. Even to be among other brethren to encourage them is a problem. 2024, embrace the commandment of God. Embrace the gathering of the saints. Embrace it with all your heart. Embrace it by the grace of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. 2024. 2024. Don't walk in the ways of the unbelievers. Separate yourself. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. Thank you, Father. For we are the temple of the living God. Just as God said, I will dwell among them and walk among them. 2024, make a vow. You know you are the temple of God. As a temple of God, will you defile that temple of God? Will you compromise? Will you compromise? Will you walk in the ways of the scoff? Will you walk in the ways of the sinner? Will you walk in the counsel of the ungodly? He said, yeah. He said, verse, verse 17 says, he said, he said, he said, so come out from among unbelievers and be separate, says the Lord. This scripture is not saying that you will not go and minister to unbelievers. Coming out of unbelievers is to come out of the way they behave, the way they think, the way they reason. Unbeliever means those that don't believe in God. So, come out from them. Don't be easily yoked with them. Don't put a yoke, don't be the same yoke with them. No, a yoke is uh, a, a, a yoke that you put on animals together, two animals together. You put it on them. So, when he say don't equally yoke means don't be in the same level of reasoning. Don't be in the same behavior with them. Don't walk in the same integrity with them. Remember, your body is a temple of God. Remember, you are the city on the hill that cannot be hidden. Remember, through you, through the Holy Spirit in you, through your character, through your action, and through your praying for those around you, the Lord will draw them to himself. 2024 is a year, a great year. Though 
if you are thinking in your mind that 2024 that the old world will be at peace will be so great yes we pray it but the truth of the matter is that the more the years the more things are tough but in 2024 don't be afraid don't let the fear of the devil make you timid guess what 2024 there might be noise there might be noise of famine the God who provided for Abraham will provide for you. Make that vow and say, the Lord is my Ebenezer. Ebenezer, the great provider. Abraham named that person. God will provide. Now, let's begin to pray. Say, Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus, in everything that I need to do that is in line with your will and your word, that give you delight. Lord, because I know you will provide. You will provide me with the strength that I need. Spiritual strength, physical strength. You will provide for me all that I need to fulfill the divine purpose of you in my life and my family and the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. 2024. 2024. 2024. Don't declare anything negative. Even if it look as if it's not the way you expect, begin to declare positively. Begin to declare the word. He said, when you too shall agree the thing, that too means when you declare the word, the Holy Spirit can agree with you. When you declare the word with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God in you, that thing will come to pass according to the will of God. Praise the Lord. So, 2024, don't declare negative things. Because your mouth, your tongue is filled with a blessing. 2024 is a year of saying, I will evangelize. My feet shall be beautiful. My feet shall be beautiful. He said, how beautiful are the feet of those that evangelize. Evangelize with everything that you have. Remember, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is lacking to be those that he, a man gave talent, he gave some ten he gave some five and he gave some one now the one who used his own wisely, his talent and bring more talent to himself guess what because he profited with the talent that was given to him the master added to the one that he had now 2024 that which you have in you. If you're that person, you cook. You just enjoy cooking. And you work in the restaurant. Before you serve the food, begin to pray on that food. If possible, fast before you come to work. Say, Father, I declare in the name of Jesus, everyone that shall eat this food, let mercy begin to locate them. Everyone that shall eat this food, Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus, as they are eating my food, precious Father, let them be healing in their body. Make that vow of declaration by grace. Begin to declare it. Because as you are doing that, you are doing it according to the mind of God. <laughs> Thank God. I give God a praise. Where I am ministering from is a barber shop. This is a barber shop. I didn't say, oh, when God told me, start the ministry in the barber shop. Ah, so no, I can't do it in the barber shop. No, I know when I close the shop, so so time, I, I may not make money. It is God that gave me. This is my Isaac I'm giving back to God. Make that business space. Make that office a place of God. You don't need to be shouting to say I'm a Christian and I'm a Christian. In your office. Anytime you are with people, be kind. Show the kindness of Jesus. Show the goodness of Jesus. That is your giving your Isaac to God. Your Isaac could be your car. You are driving your car. There's somebody in your place of work who does not drive. And you are going to the same route. Brother, if it's a brother, help that person. That doesn't mean that you will not work in wisdom as well. You know, it's good to help people. But when, as you are helping them, put a demarcation between them loyal you to sin and you helping them. So, use what you have to be a blessing to people. In 2024, made that vow because Abraham sowed the seed of blessing. 
and they receive a multiple blessing. Brother, sister, friend, man of God, woman of God, 2024, make that vow to give all to God that your heavenly father will be delighted. I know definitely in my heart that this word that you are receiving is not a coincidence. 2024, if you are a husband, love your wife as Christ has loved the church. If you are a wife, be submissive to your husband in the love of God. And if you are a child, hear the words of your parents. Honor your parents. Celebrate them. I celebrate my mother. I respect my mother. Scripture says, honor your father and your mother that it may be well with you. That is a commandment that comes with a reward automatically. My brother, my sister, 2024, make a vow and I will play my role as a husband. Make a vow as a wife. I will play my role as a wife. If you are that woman, even that man might not be the world, might not do things that you are happy about. Don't you think that God can use you? God can use your forgiving him. God can use the love you give to him, even if he doesn't deserve it by his action. God can use those things that you are doing prayerfully, praying for him. Going out there, you see anything good, buy for him, even if he doesn't buy for you. As you are buying it, lay your hand on it. Say, as my husband wear this cloth today, in the name of Jesus. Father, let him have a counter in Jesus' name. I think a lot of us, we are not patient enough. We say we cannot tolerate that man. That is the same man God revealed to you and said, that is your husband. That is the same woman that God revealed to you and said, that is your wife. You say, no more. I cannot tolerate him anymore. What will you tell the master? If Jesus come today, what will you tell him? I will always say, Christianity is not a religion. It's a way of life. 2024, let your actions speak louder than the word that you speak. Let your actions speak louder than the religious outlook you carry along, uh, 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 around. Let them see love. Let them see love. Let them see the goodness of love in that house. Because God is love. You cannot say you are a Christian. You cannot say you are a believer. And yet, you don't love that which that is close to you. You don't even love your husband. You don't even love your wife. You don't even love your children. 2024, make a vow. It's all about the joy of the Lord. That is my strength. It's all about the joy of the Lord. That is my strength. It's all about the joy of the Lord. That is my strength. 2024, help others to climb that mountain. Arados Nibaya. Help them to climb that mountain. Help that child to climb that mountain. Help that father to climb that mountain. Help that mother to climb that mountain. 2024, help them to climb that mountain so that the greatness that comes from obeying the vow that you made you will benefit child of it, including your children, including your children, children, they will be partaker of that blessing in the name of Jesus. I want you to make this declaration. Say, Heavenly Father, every word that I've received this moment, Lord, every vow that I've made in line with your word, Father, I declare in the name of Jesus, Father, give me the grace to keep to them. The vow to be a good wife, the vow to be a good husband. The vow to be a good son, a good daughter. The vow to be a servant, a both servant that will serve you. Serve in the vineyard. Serve with all my heart. The vow that I've made. And that my garment will not be defiled by your grace. The vow that I made. And I will allow the light in me to shine. That you alone will be glorified. The vow that I made, Lord, that this year, in the name of Jesus, that job that you gave me in 2023, 2024, I will spread your gospel to the action that I exhibit, to the integrity that, I, that, that people will see, that I have the morals, the word that I speak, 
men will see you in me. 2023, I made this declaration by your mercy. I made this vow, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that your word will be a mirror in my life. People will see your goodness. I made this declaration, 2024, the ministry that you place in my hand, that you hold, and I'll be grace to be used as a vessel. I will not be lazy. I receive the grace to keep to that vow of interceding and praying for others. Say, begin to declare, say in the name of Jesus, 2024, I declare the garment of praise will not cease from my mouth. I will praise the Lord with everything. I will worship the Lord with my heart in the name of Jesus. 2024, I declare and I make a vow. I shall be patient. I shall be merciful in the name of Jesus. 2024, I made this vow by the power of the Holy Spirit that I will conquer every form of sin that will come my way in the name of Jesus. 2024, I made this vow by the grace of God, by the mercy of God, that my hand will not be stained with blood in the name of Jesus. 2024, I made this vow that I will not despise the gathering of the saints. They gift in me, it will edify others. And the gift in others will edify me in the name of Jesus. 2024, I made this declaration in the name of Jesus Christ. I will give to the poor. I will give to the poor knowledge and that you have given to me. I will give to the poor the substance that you have given to me. 2024, I will give wisely in the name of Jesus. 2024, I make a vow that I will act on to you just as you are acting on to me in the name of Jesus. 2024, I made this vow to open myself. I open myself to you. Father, I open myself to you. I open my heart to you in the name of Jesus. Are you that person? She's not giving your life to Jesus. She don't know Jesus yet. 2024 is here. Make that vow to allow the King of Kings to come into your boat. Alagandaraba, the good boat of your destiny. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe Jesus, you died for me. I confess my sin. By your strength, I made this vow. By your grace and mercy, I made this vow. By your help of your spirit, that it will fill me, that it's filling me now. I made this vow. And I will be able to keep to your word. And I will be transformed in the image of you. In the name of Jesus. Are you that person? You've left the church. You'll be hurt. Say, I'm not going back to that church again. Having to do anything to do with church, I'll be worshiping in my house. You've not done anything wrong by the way you think. But you see, the word of God, there is a balance. Here the Bible says, where two or more gather in this navy and our midst. But take it this way. If you say because someone has offended, you're not going to the church. That man, that woman does not hold the church. God holds that church. If God has told you to stay in that church, stay there. In short, in the midst of all that they are doing to you, keep praying for you. Let's take an example from Jesus. They were naming Jesus the cross. He said, Father, forgive them their sin, for they don't know what they do. That is Jesus for you. Jesus knew that Peter would deny him. He still prayed for him. Jesus died for you. Even before you were born. Now, I'm not saying you should die for them. The dying that you will do for them is for you to die in the flesh. That anything they do to you, don't let it haunt you. Don't let it chase you away from God's presence. But stand in the gap. I am saying this. God is speaking through me to you and to myself. It doesn't mean because I'm preaching it that I have done all the things by the book. But by his presence that is here, by his word that is here, by the power of the Holy Spirit that is here, I am declared, I'm declaring the word, I am declared with you as well. Now I want you to go back. God wants me, God wants you to go back to that church that he has told you to go and serve. Go there 2024 
and tell yourself that the vow that I've made to become a soldier of Christ, by the vow that I've made to become a sheep for the master, for the vow that I've made that I'm a royal priesthood by his grace that brought me to become the royal priesthood. I will not go away from God's instruction. Now, you might be saying, is it by my strength? Uh, if I made the vice by my strength? No! That is why grace is involved. When you make a vow with the grace of God, calling God into it, calling the Holy Spirit into it, that will come to pass. Every obedience I need to do. Jesus spoke to the disciples. I said, they should keep, he said, if you are truly my disciple, you will keep my, my commandment. But what did Jesus do next? He knew that being who they are, human they are, being who Peter is, being who all the disciples are, they cannot do it by themselves. The scripture said that he breathed upon them and he said, I will send the comforter, the helper. Just say, Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, you are the helper. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit, to easily, easily keep to the commandment of God. Holy Spirit, I need the fire of you. Say, I need the fire of you. I need the fire of you, Lord. Let it begin to burn the flesh in me. Let your spirit be more and beyond overcoming, conquering every form of lies of the devil in the name of Jesus. And if you're that person, you've not forgiven anybody, say, Lord, I forgive them. And if you've forgiven them, you know what you would do? Get dressed on Sunday, go to that church and begin to shake everyone that I've brought you in that church. Tell them that you love them. Tell them that I love you with the love of Christ. And if you do that, you will see the greatness that come from the vow of commitment by the grace of God. You begin to enjoy that blessing. God bless you. I just want to sing the last song before we close. I want to tell us. It's a song that the Lord is laying in my heart to sing. It's not a song that you know, but you sing your own new song. I give myself to you. Taking it back, laying it down, not taking it back. I give my soul to you, oh God. I give my soul to you.
Thank you, Father. We know that you will make the way. We know that you will mold us. We know that our heart is in your hand. We know that you will help us to fulfill all these vows. That they will attract and bring the greatness that comes from you. That a blessing that is bigger, beyond our human understanding, will be seen in us. And everyone connected to us will be blessed in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have fellowship. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Bless and abide with us now forevermore. Amen. On the 28th of January, we're going to be worshiping and praying. Please, get ready. Log on on the same Facebook. Please, Osamoyi. At please, Osamoyi. Come and let's pray together. Let's worship together. Men and great women of God will be here. And we'll be worshiping God in truth and in spirit. And God will answer the prayer that we'll pray. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed and declared. Amen. Pray.